this really quickly. So I just wanted to quickly show you just very simply. So for those of you that are pretty new to watercolour, just really quickly, um, looking at how to get your light colours on watercolour. So because watercolour is transparent, it's different to most other types of painting. So in acrylic or oil, you can just paint a lighter colour on top of a darker colour. So if you wanted to do, um, you know, a yellow sun and a blue sky, you could paint that yellow sun, that yellow circle over the blue in acrylic um, and oil. In watercolour, you can't do that um, because it, it shows the other colour underneath. So you have to work from light colours um, first and then build up the layers getting darker um, unless you paint around something and leave that bit of paper clear. So a lot of the time you leave the paper clear to show your whites um, in watercolour. So that, that becomes the white instead of using white paint. Um, so I've got some examples here of how you can get your light colours on, on watercolour. So when you're looking at an image like the flower that we're doing today, um, first you want to look at where are the lightest areas in that image. Do I need to mask them off with masking fluid to make my life easier as I start painting the different layers? Um, so with masking fluid, um, I've got this fine liner masking fluid that I use because it saves me getting a paintbrush um, gunked up with the the um, fluid when it dries. Um, so you just sort of tip it up, pop it on a circle. So if I was doing a sun, like I say, you could either paint around that area and leave that area clear, or you can just put a blob of masking fluid on there. I did time how long my masking fluid on my painting took to dry yesterday though. Um, and it took two hours to fully dry where, where it was thickest. So if you're doing a big painting with a lot of masking fluid or areas where there's, it's quite thick, um, then you do need to do that ahead of time. And then you'll have to wait for that to completely dry before you can then paint over the top. So you can see when it's wet, the masking fluid is sort of a light colour. Um, and then when it dries, it sort of goes yellowy um, with this, this cream coloured masking fluid. I know there are blue masking fluids, um, I think slightly green colours as well. Um, and then you just rub the masking fluid off. So you can even, you know, touch your fingers to it, make sure it's not leaving any on your finger. So you know it's fully dry. And then just rub that off. So once you start getting an edge off the paper, you can, so there it just starts to come away there. You can sort of peel that off. Okay. And that you can see is completely masked off the white of the paper there, left that completely clear of that blue paint that I put over the top. So the other way to lighten up if you've gone over something is to lift out using your brush. So this is dry blue paint. If I just take a small brush and wet it, Just dab off some of that excess water. I don't want to add on loads of water. I just want enough that it starts to move the paint. So this is fully dry. If I start to work into this, if I just zoom in a little bit, you can see it starts to reactivate that paint on the paper. And you can see it starts to sort of move around a little bit again. Rinse your brush out. Just dry it a little bit. Just try to soak off some of this excess here. And get your paper towel. Now that it's sort of moving around in the water there, you can then just dab just press down with your paper towel and that will soak up any paint that's now lifted off there. 
So if you do make a mistake, you know, and you want to neaten an edge, um, you might have seen them in the video from last week. Um, you know, you can just go with your paintbrush just on an edge or something and try to lift out some of that paint. Just work that brush into that area. Rinse it out. Do that again. And then just use your paper towel just to soak up that there. Um, but you can see, compared to the white here, obviously you can't get 100% of that colour off there. Once it's on the paper, it, especially the stronger colours, they will to some extent kind of dye your paper. Um, so if you had, you know, something that you wanted to lighten up a little bit, you can bring it back to some extent or some edges, you know, make them less obvious, neaten them up a little bit. Um, but obviously the best way to sort of get a get it nice and clear is by using your masking fluid. Again, you can use your kitchen paper to do it when it's wet. So if I popped some blue paint So wet onto here. You can get your paper towel and you can just take out some of the paint there. So again, if I just press that to an area and then lift it off. You can lift some of that paint out whilst it's still wet there. So it's easier to lift out things when they're still wet um, because they haven't fully soaked in and dyed the paper yet. So you can get a little bit lighter. Um, if you notice you've done, you know, you've gone over an area that you didn't want to, if you work fairly quickly, so it's not had time to, to settle into there too much, you can get that fairly light. Um, and this is a good way of getting sort of cloud effects in sky. You can see it gives a nice uneven effect there if you've got kind of your paper scrunched up a little bit. Um, the only other way is using white gouache. So white gouache is the best way of, of painting back a white. Um, so I would say use this sparingly because you don't want to lose the transparency and that quality of watercolours that you get. Um, a little bit on here. So it comes out as a, like a liquid watercolour. Um, so gouache is an, basically an opaque watercolour. Um, and it works well with watercolour because it sort of handles similarly, um, but it's opaque, so it's not transparent like watercolour. Um, but it sits nice and flat on the paper, whereas acrylic or oil, you get some texture with that. And also you get a little bit of shine normally as well. So that would stand out if you use that over your watercolour. So, you know, in a tube, liquid like that, you can just take a damp brush and use it pretty much neat. And again, if you just need to neaten up some edges, you know, you've gone over your border or something, you can just, as I say, I would, I would use it quite sparingly. Um, but if I wanted to do a circle, I can just paint that in. But you can see if I zoom out a little bit, so that paint over here compared to again masking off the white of the paper 
on the left there, you can see again, even the white paint is not as strong as just leaving the white of the paper. And, you know, you might want to experiment. You might like the, the use of the white gouache in your work. Um, and you might want to experiment with that more. Um, I tend to sort of use the masking method uh, mostly, but it just means you've got that extra step at the start um, to wait for that to dry before you can start painting. If I just show you quickly, so if we wanted to paint, you know, a yellow sun over a blue sky, this is what would happen if we tried to just paint it over the top. Let's try and clean my brush. So probably a lot of this all of you know already, but just in case you didn't know. So a bit of yellow, so yellow paint looks like that over your white paper. On this though, you can see it just shows that blue underneath there. So the only way to do it is to then, uh, is to mask it off or lift out and then paint your yellow in there first. Okay, so here's a line that I did last night, so it's dried already. Again, I'm just gonna take a brush that's clean um, and it's damp, but it's not, you know, dripping with water. So if I just work that into an edge, the same as we kind of did with the, the lifting out, you can, once it's dry, so that's fully dry, um, just start to loosen an edge here. So this is how we can sort of soften edges if we want to just get that gradual gradient there. Just keep working out that. But obviously it depends how good your paper is as well. So um, you need quite a robust paper to be able to sort of, so I'm not pushing down with a lot of force. I'm just going over that area a lot and it just starts to move that again. Okay, and you can soften an edge there. Just clean my brush out and just take that to that bottom edge and just take that down so you've got a soft transition. So if you've got a hard edge, so you see that top line there is very sharp against the paper, you know, and you think, oh, actually that needs to be soft you can go in and soften that a little bit after it's dried. We're going to be doing a lot of work. So if I do a wet um, line, so that was dried. If I just pop on a wet bit of paint, it's a lot easier to do it when it's wet. So wash your brush out, dab it on your paper, paper towel and then just touch that edge that you want to soften so when it's still wet you should be able to move that a lot more so you see how that's just reactivated again So that's how you can do your soft transition from a really dark shadow. Clean your brush off and just, you know, you can take that down even more if you want to. Like that. So it's a good little um, practice exercise, even just doing these sort of things. Just working out how much water you need on your brush. Um, you know, how much you need to, to move it. Um, on there to get it activating again.